Yes, um, we have been. I didn't know if you guys had to do anything else, so yeah. I normally don't get to the meetings this early. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're asking for the same amount again um, as we have for the last five years, um, the 63.94.50. Um, in 2014, we had the uh, 1,210 and a half hours. Um, worked out to be, I kind of did quick math, about five dollars and twenty-eight cents an hour is what it worked out to be there. Um, in twenty fifteen, we didn't do as many septic tanks, but we increased in our water wells and testing, and we did a few more lender evaluations in the county. Um, so it worked out to be twelve hundred and seventy-one hours. So it works out to be about five dollars and three cents an hour is what it's working out to be. And in the last, well, I can only go back six years almost six years with the, what we've got there. And about that 1,200 hours is about our average average for the county uh, on there. Now I will say this year is starting off slow, and I think it's because we've had a little bit of rain, ponds are filling up. You can see last year was most of our, our wells being drilled. We're not seeing as many as that right as many this year going on. But I also have to say that our lender evals in Stafford County are starting to go up. I've already got three done this year. And I've got another one scheduled right after the meeting here. So, um, what's the lender email? We do that for the banks and folks who are selling homes for the new buyers. So the bankers, on septics and water wells, make sure they're safe and up to county codes and state codes. So the, I say banks, but the lenders will loan on them. And if not, then they make sure they're brought up to state and county codes prior to that with that. So, you know, it's hard to say lender evaluations this year in all my county so far have really gone up, so I'm starting to see a lot of folks sell, and I don't know if it's because of the oil, you know, people starting to move out. Yeah, so, you know, we're starting to see a lot of that this year, so it's hard to say what's going to happen. It's not people moving out. Well, actually, well, in Ness County, we're seeing a lot of families moving out. We're seeing a lot more retired folks moving in. So our population is dropping because the families are moving out. But, you know, the houses are being sold. <coughs> so that's in Ness County. Ness County, and, you know, I know all the counties have been hit real hard with the oil, but Ness is really good. Two years ago, you couldn't find a place in Ness to rent. I mean, I don't care if it was a hole in the wall. Yeah. And now it's it's starting to it's starting to you're starting to see a lot of the more rural houses are starting to become vacant again and that for sale or rent. And even in, in the city limits you're starting to see a lot of those folks that were there just just gone. Mm -hmm. so, which is a sad thing, so I'm hoping we can get the things turned around on that part of it. So um, any questions for you guys? The next couple of years, do you see your costs increasing? Any? I'm going to say no. What we did, and, and this is what's happened. Um, my board of directors, this we've seen the writing on the wall. I mean, it's going to start. I mean, our fundings are going to start getting cut sooner or later. Um, this last year, we the board of directors are taking over all the the county. So we don't have Adams Brown Barrel and Balls, so we're not paying them on a monthly rate right now. And we've also eliminated our office. We've, our office now is in the truck. We've got a mobile office. They set the truck up, so I've got internet there, my computer's there, so I have access there. In some ways it's been a little more difficult, but in other ways it's been better because I can talk to somebody on the phone and I can send you a permit right now in your front of your computer. You can fill it out, send it back. I can issue it right there. And you can, so. In some ways, it's, it's been a little bit better. Uh, in other ways, if I'm in a bad cell phone area, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's just not going to happen yet. Um, so the board's starting to make 
those cuts so that we can start. You know, we're I think this year we figured out we were going to save between Adams Brown Barrel and Ball, and our office space that we were renting is going to save us right around eleven thousand dollars. So it's helping us out there. So that's why they've asked, you know, we're not, we haven't increased any, and this has been our fifth year at that now. We haven't raised it at all um, on that part of it. The one thing that Pawnee County is opting to do is they're looking at raising their permit fees again. I pray that they don't because they're, they're extremely high now. Um, you know, like right now in Stafford County, our water well permits are at 125. Our septic permits are at 150. In Pawnee County, their water well permits are at 150, which isn't too bad. But their septic permits, they bumped up to 250. So they're, I think they're trying to, if we can raise the permit fees and keep our costs down, then we shouldn't have to ask the county for any more money, is what they're kind of looking at on that part of it. So, so that's an option for you folks to think about, too. Something you guys want us to do, we're more than happy to do it. Your water testing, do you do, you know, obviously, you know, those in the house, you send those out? We do, for our water testing that we do for the state, like for water wells that we do them for daycares and the lender evaluations, we just check for nitrates and bacteria. We do that in-house. Now, if the lender or the homeowner wants us to check for something else, then we have to send that down to serve the tech. It's who we, okay. it's who we go through on there. But for nitrates and bacteria, we can do all that there in the office there. In your truck. Well, <laughs> what they did was they, they uh, I had a spare bedroom at the house, and so <laughs> the, the board decided that we can set up that test equipment. Yeah. I've got my laptop, one of the laptops in there, too. So, so now we can't do everything for my <laughs> so, Very good. Okay. So those are some of the changes we've made. And phone numbers are the same. If you call the office number, it'll give you our cell phone number. On there. Cell phone number is the best way to get a hold of me. So, and we're doing everything by the internet. Okay. If you have any questions or concerns, give me all of them. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We can push in the printed minutes of June 8th. Second. Motion to be made. Second to be adopted. Minutes of June 8th. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. But then the, all the tornado warning and everything, we decided it was better not to do it that night. Um, like I say, our board works on this, nine members, elected officials here with us, and so they spent a lot of time last night going through this. And so, what we've also got with us now, we brought our budget worksheet. I think those of you who attended our meetings in the past. Have you been filled in on, are you aware of the cuts we've taken already by the state? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Um, okay. This last year, um, the university, you know, with our governor's uh, budget cuts and things, the university, we had a three and a half percent callback in April. We had to write the university a check back for, um, which equaled out to be seventeen hundred and ninety-seven dollars, which doesn't sound a lot, but on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar or hundred eighty thousand dollar budget that gets in there. Um, well, then, with the budget cuts for the 2017, that was on 2016 budgets. 2017, it's a four, it ends up being a 4.4. .4. And if you look at your uh, sheet I handed you, did you get one of those worksheets? Um, 
when you look at the second line there from the top on the under the 2017 budget, normally from the university the last several years we've gotten $38,688 um, from them to, for our program. That's in cash, actually cash dollars. We get others money from them for specialists, for, uh, publications, things like that. This is actually cash dollars that come into our budget. Well, that 4.4, it ended up being a 4.4 reduction. So that takes it down to $36,972. So that reduces it by 1716 for the 2017 uh, budget year. Um, we're also, last year we'd asked for an increase and didn't, uh, with your budget situation in the county, we didn't get that. So we did put some more extra money into that. That unencumbered, like in 2016, that unencumbered balance, we ended up putting an extra $2,100 in our budget to make the budget work. From our reserves. From our reserve dollars. Um, this year, with the 2016 budget, we had some issues with our vehicle, uh, with the copier. So we spent more of our reserve than we actually normally would have. So this year, the board felt like our kind of our piggy bank savings we have they were able to put about $4,500 into that to make this budget work. They'd like to ask the board um, for about a 5% increase. That is uh, $7,136, that number off the side. That's how much of an increase it would be. From that, with the reduction from the state, and then also with the reduction that we would pledge to our budget due to, or like I say, just not maybe having that reserve, that ended up being $2,854 that we were able to add into line items. So, I mean, as far as money actually to increase line items. From that, um, the equipment line item, the board uh, added uh, $1,054 there. If you've seen the last two years, we've overspent our equipment. That's because we bought a copier the year before, and then last year we had our expedition, had some issues with the motor. We had to put $2,500 in, um, and it's an 08 with 103,000 miles on it, and so we put the money into it. Uh, so that's why those have been overspent a little bit. And then also our travel with motel costs, uh, gasoline costs, things. We've been really hitting that travel real close to where we've been. Maybe overspent, so they put $1,000 there of that 2854. And we also did add into the salary item $800. The reason we did that, and you guys are probably aware of it, with President Obama's new white collar overtime law, that anything under forty-seven thousand dollars of salary, you have to pay overtime to. Well, because of uh, some of our staff that is under that, we needed to bump them to get them over it, so we don't have to worry about the overtime. Because overtime might cost a lot more. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know what? I don't think we want to spend the money to pay overtime. Because if we start looking at overtime. Like we just got back from camp, we were at Rock Springs for four days. How do you figure overtime on that? I mean, you figure fair time, and by the time you do all that, it's going to cost a lot more than $800, so it's easier just to do that. So that's why that salary line item did bump up. If you look out to the uh, left or right, our 2016 salaries, that you can see what our salaries are that we have right now, and that includes no overtime, um, anything down there in that little, I wrote it out the side, it says 2016 salary. So that's where we added the 800 to that to bump that up. And then we actually, our salaries are $133 less than what's in that line item. Uh, the, right there. And we do have a little bit in reserves that we have tried to put back every year so we could trade in the vehicle eventually. Without having to come to the board and say, hey, or commissioners and say, hey, we need a chunk. Because you helped buy that last time. Um, and I don't know if you guys are aware of that. From but outside the budget dollars. Um, the more we dig into our reserves to put into a budget, because the cuts we're taking from K State, the less money we have there to like keep the vehicle trained out or keep the pairs on. So um, we are putting a little bit more into our budget this year out of our reserves. But if we continue to do that um, in the next two years, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because we actually, like I said, we do have. Um, because our reserve, if you actually look at our reserve, our non-appropriate dollars, we've got about, and you, that doesn't show up on this form anywhere. We have about $40,000 in our non-appropriate fund reserve, but about $6,000 of that is grant money that's specific for a specific project. The after-school program, uh, Amy wrote a grant for that life after school. We also received a grant to help, because like, you know, where was Sandyland out there, 
we kind of do as a pay as we go. We try not to buy any seed or anything or do all that with taxpayer. We got some grant to do that. There's about six thousand dollars, like say, or not quite six thousand in that fund for that. So out of that thirty-nine thousand, there's a little over right at six thousand dollars that's already spoken for, tied up. Then we also have as our camp. I am the camp chair or treasurer, excuse me, for our Heart of Kansas camp group that we go to Rock Springs. Well, so all that money, it used to be several years ago, you know, that we had our own checking account separate from anything else. The Heart of Kansas had their own group. Well, because of uh, concerns with people handling money and agents handling money, it all has to be into an extension council fund now instead of being a 4-H council or something else. So it's all in that fund too. So there's about $13,000 of that $39,000 is camp money that isn't ours. <laughs> it's the camp funds. So right now that leaves us about twenty thousand dollars in that reserve. So by the time we put that four thousand into it and some others, like say a few years like Amy said, we're out of money and then it's like then we have to kind of ask for a big chunk if we want to continue on the way we are operating. Um, like I say the board spent a lot of time on this last night. Um, but several of them would wanted to be here today with you to visit, uh, but because of harvest which you're well aware of. Um, could not be here. Ashley was gracious enough to come in with us today, one of our board members. Um, we've asked the board members if you have questions, they might be in contact with you in the next several days just to uh, visit with you if you have questions to help answer things. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions or concerns or like I said, we will want to field any questions or try to if we can. And like I say, that would increase our total spending authority with the, even though like I say it was a $7,000 increase, that would only increase our spending authority 1.5%. We would take it up to 191, 739 because of dollars lost in other areas. Um, and you can see the percentages of where that increases and decreases and things like that along the way. It does increase our total budget spending if we only get one and a half percent. Basically, the rest of it is to make up dollars lost to other spending or other funding sources. You have money in the capital outlay reserve. What's that? Okay, the capital outlay. That was where um, after we bought the vehicle in '09. It's an '08. We bought it in '09. It was a program vehicle that had 20,000 miles on it. The board started putting money away, and actually we had at one time an equipment fund. That dollar figure was up to like eight thousand dollars. So what they could spend with the idea of putting money away in the capital outlay every year, so that in four or five years, replace the vehicle before things yeah. start happening, and that way we don't have to come and ask for thirty thousand dollars. We have that money available, but because of budget um, situations and. Uh, increases and decreases and things from the state. We haven't been able to put that money away like they wanted to, but they did there is twenty two thousand uh, so that could be used on a vehicle. Yeah, that's the plan for it. That's the plan for it. They're trying not to touch that funds. Um, to use it for, to make the budget work as well. And we have a little bit like say that's an 08 uh, vehicle has a hundred three thousand on right now. We did have that Really, most of the things that happened to it have been just maintenance items, like brakes, wear items, you know, really like that motor last year when it, the uh, cam phasers went out. And, and it's only tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to tell them to take the keys away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. But and like I say, it's still a solid vehicle. And like I say, it's not it's one of those things that you know that when you're hauling yourself in it would be a big deal when you're hauling kids you really don't want to be looking on the road. And so far that hasn't happened, although it did strand maybe at Ant we'll say at when the phaser went out, they were at Rock Springs last year. So they had to have a tow to uh, uh I just turned the ignition on and it kinda went <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little I didn't I joke that for those that remember uh, Captain Kirk at the phaser was had to kill, not stun. Phaser is. So, like I said, we did have to spend a little extra money. And that's because we always plan on when we do budget to put some extra money away, but because of that $2,500 we had to put into the vehicle last year, we didn't have that money to put in. So, we did not put anything into that, 20, uh, that capital outlay last year. As you can see, it's the same for 2016 mm -hmm. as the same this year. We did put 
Gray will put about you know, five hundred dollars in the year before. But up until that point, we've been able to put two or three thousand away every year, and even the five thousand the first year, it just hasn't worked since. You're aware of the property tax that they've built past it. Yeah. <laughs> so where were we set that this year might be where it's at. So, because I seriously doubt that if you want to go to a vote of the people that you give me. So, yeah. So I would understand that. So um, that's where we stand right now. If you guys have um, questions, concerns, or like I said, we'd sure be willing to field them. If you'd like to visit with the board, we can give you their numbers too or sometime. Or like I said, they will probably be in contact with you. We've asked some of them too. Uh, Keith Lamb is our board chair this year, which you're probably aware of. Have you, Hank, you bring this up? Has there been any talk of uh, cooperation with another county? Or is that um, pretty much been on hold? It's kind of been on hold. We've started after our annual meeting last year. We kind of visited a little more about it. Um, we've talked to some of the other counties around. Um, Ellis County and Barber, or Barber, Barton County, they started conversation about a year ago, visiting about it. I don't know where they're at. I don't know if they've met those two. Those two counties, right. Um, we've kind of talked to Edwards County. We said, in fact, after our annual meeting, I, I just visited where I think Amy and I and Claire, we kind of talked to Clayton about districts, because I think he'd been in one of those meetings. and asked kind of what the thoughts were and so we start we did send out an email to the counties around us and basically the philosophy was if we have to we're not really interested at this point but i think there's a lot more discussion in now than what there was i think after this year like i said that property tax was bill and the whole thing what else some of the other counties budgets do you know are uh so ours or i don't know for sure i know like edwards county their budget is probably going to be a little less, but they also have two agents that are within. Well, they've got a brand new agent just started uh, a week ago, and then Marty, he was their FSA director, uh, Marty Gleason, but they were going to close that office. Supposedly it was on the 11th, but he closed, so he kind of saw the writing on the wall and was able to get in there. So, uh, but they're making so less. They're starting salary. So they're starting salary. So their budgets aren't as high there, and that's, I mean, that's the thing, the longer people are in, kind of like any any position, the longer you have people on staff, the more costs, but also when you start getting new agents, you got training costs, so it all is kind of a write-off. Um, Pratt County's budget is higher than ours, I do know it, it's, um, uh, it's 200 or something, I think, I don't know that for sure, but I think it's in that range. Not a lot higher, but it is. Um, Barber County's, uh, used to be about this one I talked to them used to be in that same range as what ours was. How does the university come up with a dollar amount that they give you or cut you? That's a good question. I mean, that's, I'm sitting that's there looking, I was sitting here looking at this and it don't make them a rhyme or reason. Well, so. um, the callback figures that they called that they did was three and a half percent. It came out to seventeen ninety seven is what we had to write back. And so, whenever they said this was going to be a four and a half percent, and it ended up at four point four, seventeen sixteen, it's like, okay, that doesn't jive. So we started questioning the three and a half percent they use on salary, but they also put in benefits, the insurance, um, Social Security, and that kind of things were part of that three and a half percent. Is how they came up with that number. This time, the four and a half percent did not take in the benefit part of it. It was just strictly this, uh, what they figured their salary item or whatever, uh, that number, whatever you use it for, 38,688, is based totally on that dollar figure. The other figures they figured was about $51,000, which they figured by the benefits they put in, the immunized salary and the salary dollars and things like that is how they got to three and a half. Um, one of the kickers, too, that we're going to have to deal with is whenever they say four and a half percent budget had reduction for 2017 well their 2017 budget starts july 1. so some of this is going to come out of our 2016 budget that we didn't plan on so we're kind of getting a double whammy this year this time because we lost three and a half percent in march or april we had to pay back and now we're so half of this uh 1760 will probably come out of our 2016 budget we're working on now 
second part it will come out of 2017 budget. So, and it's one of those things that uh, the information we've all gotten from the state, I'm sure, kind of like what you've probably gotten from the state too, has been pretty vague at times. You have to kind of read between the lines and every I feel day. like they don't really even know, yeah. you know, is the impression we're getting. Because they, they, yeah, they hadn't shared with us that the 2017 budget, unless you just were thinking about it, was start July 1. I just have to be laying, I was thinking about this one night at home, and it's like, oh, crud. So called them, yeah, that's right. Why didn't you tell us this? And it's like they hadn't thought about it, I guess. So, uh, so we are dealing with issues, um, but we're trying to work as economically and feasibly as we can, and things. Um, so, so last year's appropriation was the 142.737. Right. Right. So then five percent of that would be 149.873, which is 71.36 additional dollars. We're going to ask for the commissioners. That's where that dollar figure comes from. But because of the cuts, it only ended up being a one and a half percent total dollar increase mm -hmm. to our budget. Twenty-four thousand dollars, forty-four hundred dollars, twenty-eight hundred fifty-four dollars. Yeah, it would be a line item increase. The rest of it just making up for yeah. reductions from other sources. Just a shift from the state to us. Yeah, exactly. Like everything else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we feel your pain. I understand. Um, but that's where we stand. So. Uh, and once you guys sign the budget, we will get it to our area director and get him to sign it, and we'll go from there. Now, is this recent 18% reduction to all universities? Is this reflected in here? That's that four and a half percent. They, okay. they were the way they they and that makes it again. Who knows what the formula is on campus? By the time they had reduction, the 18 half percent the university had. They were able to, with open positions they have, they're not going to fill other sources. The four and a half percent came to us. It equaled out. So I'm sure some other places are higher than that. Um, or some other off or other departments on campus are probably higher than the four and a half percent. But by the time they figure with the open position they have an extension that they won't be filling. Um, as an example, like our state 4 H leader is going to retire this year. She was supposed to retire June 1. Well, the freeze hit at the same time, so she's actually going to work in January and then see from there. If they weren't, we weren't going to be able to fill that position with dollars, they just didn't have with that other budget reduction. And there are several of those. And I think our president of the university probably saw the writing on the wall, and that's what he <laughs> mailed yeah. that and, and knew yeah. farther north. Yeah. It seems like if anything took me to in the state, it was the inverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not sure the legislature totally understands how it affects the counties yeah. because talking with some of them, it's like, well, we tried to protect extension. Well, they didn't realize that we were part of it. I mean, they don't put the university and extension maybe together like that, and the, the dollars that we get from them. Because they figure out that uh, there's a formula they got, and they say, who knows how close it is. And there's about 80,000. They figure that with these dollars plus the specialist support they get, because like I say, we have a specialist that come into the county that we can call the programs, the publications and things we get, um, and some of that stuff. It's about $80,000 that actually is support, not all of the dollars, I mean, that we see, but just through support through, uh, let's say, the, about 38,000 was actual dollars, and the rest of that was made up through specialists and other resources that give non cash dollars. They don't seem to have the power that the public schools have in No. <laughs> so every time the public school streams this the universities want to then the universities take it in. It doesn't always seem like the universities are maybe as fairly as KU and K State want to get they must not have the lobbyists that the schools have. <laughs> On a lighter note, I'm going to hand you all a prayer book, and we prayer. have... I just said prayer. <laughs> a fair prayer book. Yes, you need prayer. Thank you. Um, you know, we have moved bank fest to the Thursday evening of the fair wow. to try to get some... some yeah. yeah. Oh, so no, if you would... Yeah, yeah, if you would like yeah. to judge yeah. of the contest again, um, I would invite what you. Night? Thursday night, oh, it's 7 to 14th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
and we do have a new uh, the rodeo. Jeff Scott is running the rodeo this year, and uh, there's a new demo promoter running it this year. So, and some other things we're doing differently. The parade will be moved, so if you're up for election and we're right in the parade, it'll be in the afternoon this year. How hot will it be that? Um, well, if it's three to four, it'll be about 110. Yeah. And no wind. Yeah. Uh, so like a couple years ago, when it never got over 60, which was kind of Yeah, I thought we were going to go to some cold and shirt. Yeah, I remember. Rain. I went to the Life Sock Show and wore a jacket. Yeah. That's <laughs> back to the dog show, there was spear muffs and yeah. gloves and boots. <laughs> I would take gloves and that again. You know, you know, just split the difference with yeah. the um, But there are some changes on scheduling. Uh, the round robin show the ship will be in the morning, uh, trying to cool it off a little bit. So, so hopefully. And uh, we've got the letters out for the sponsors who livestock auction, so they should be in their letters day or two with their tickets for the meal. <laughs> Remind me about the sales. Well, thank you very much for your support. Okay. And uh, we know, and kind of what we've heard, that we'll may pursue to talk to the board. And Ashley now has heard it too. Uh, the districting thing, maybe look at some of that stuff a little harder. Right, too. Very good. Thank well, thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got something going on? Yeah, no. And it won't take very long. Okay. All right. If you just want to hang around, it's fine. Jim. Jim. You can come on in. Are you going to executive session? No, no, no. No, no, no. Executive session? No, this is budget. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, well, yeah, I was going to say that that's not a, that, I'm not feeling real. I'm not feeling the warm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to destroy this process. But. <laughs> I'm here strictly to talk about children's services, and um, we've, we've discussed this on an annual basis, so I, I, I'm assuming you're familiar with our programs and services. And um, There's plenty of information here if you, if or when you want to read it, but I want to, I just basically want to kind of walk through um, what's going on right now with um, how things that are happening at the state level are affecting us and, and um, the part you play in that whole thing. So, so I'll start off just simply by saying this is this year we're celebrating 50 years of providing services and Sunflower began as a program for early education for, for young children. So that's our history, that's still our, our, pri our uh, priority and our focus. So uh, that part of it, nothing much has really changed. In terms of numbers of persons served, last year um, the number of referrals that we received from all five counties was up just slightly. For Stafford County, it was actually about the same as it was the previous year. That that referral number doesn't seem to doesn't seem to change much for the majority of the counties. In fact, and when it does, it uh, it's usually kind of an unusual year when, when things like that occur. The number of children that actually receive services is down a little bit. Or, I'm, now let me let me restate that. The number of children that received either assessment or screenings or full services is down a little bit from 2014. 2014 was an exceptionally high year in terms of. Uh, referrals and children who were in need of some level of assessment only. But the actual number of children who received services who were determined to have a developmental need and who received speech therapy, um, directed services, whatever, any one of those <coughs> programs actually increased in 2015. In Stafford County, it went up from, I believe we served nine children 
in 2014, we served 12 children last year who actually entered services, so services to children and their families. So uh, the number of, of individuals who we identified as actually benefiting from services increased, even though the number of evaluations in and of themselves went down slightly. Um, I think that for whatever it's worth, that was kind of the trend throughout all five counties. So um, there's some descriptions of services here in terms of uh, infant mental health services, and I think we've talked about that in the past. I mean, if you've got questions or want to know a little bit more about that, I'm more than happy to speak to it. But primarily I want to just get into the area of need because that's, that's what touches you the most, obviously. Overall, uh, funding for children and adult programs in Kansas has been reduced significantly. Things that are occurring at the state level is, is having its effect on services for individuals with disabilities, basically all vulnerable Kansans, but certainly the population that we serve. Um, Medicaid funding for, for children's services, which uh, helps to pay for speech therapy, physical therapy, and such. And the governor's last cuts, just in the last few weeks, that funding was reduced by a minimum of 4%, and we're hearing that it may very well go down more than that. So, so that source of funding for children is being, is being affected just by those, those decisions that are being made there. Um, our health outreach program that I was talking to you a year ago about that was, uh, the state was touting as, as the way to reduce Medicaid costs and to reduce uh, emergency room visits and all of that, that we had to gear up and develop a program for uh, as of July 1st, that program is being discontinued because the state has uh, initially it was it was either a low or no match program from the federal government. As of July 1, the state has to match it, so now they've determined it's not as important as they thought it was. That's going to be, uh, yes, in terms of our overall budget, is about $120,000 reduction in funding. So we've had to lay off staff, we've had to cut back services. Um, talking about funding for adult programs, uh, the reason I'm doing that is that that has its effect on children's services as well. Because the shortfalls in funding for children's programs, we've always been able to, to supplement that with uh, basically interdepartmental transfers. Taking money that if we're, if, we're, uh, if, we're, if we've got excess funds coming in from Medicaid for adult services, or from our production operations or sales or whatever it happens to be, then we can take those excess funds and move those over to cover the shortfalls in children's services, just basic budgeting and, and cash management. But with those reductions in the adult program, we lose that flexibility. So it does have its it, it does have major effects on on our ability to do the things that we want to do with children's services. The state provides um, what they call categorical aid for, um, for school districts and working with our special education co-op out of Barton County, we're able to access those funds. Uh, they basically receive the funds and then they pass them through to us. But those funds have been changed in the last couple of years to emphasize uh, the need for professional certified staff as opposed to paraprofessional staff. So we're having to compete with school districts for the same professionals, the speech therapists, the certified teachers uh, that are in high demand and low supply to begin with. So consequently, we're faced with trying to set a salary schedule that's competitive. Uh, the state categorical aid is provided, um, basically it's a flat amount. And it varies from year to year basing on, based on the number of uh, children that are being served in, uh, in education, the number of professionals that have been uh, employed, and then obviously the amount of money that's been allocated by the legislature. But it averages around 27, maybe as much as 28,000 a year. The base salary for a certified teacher is over 30, and then when you uh, toss in taxes and insurance, that jumps pretty quickly. So we have to make up that difference with some other source of revenue, whatever it happens to be, and for us it's, 
its local support, its mill levy, its uh, fundraising events, its donations, and such. So, and then we have to build on that salary schedule each year to remain to remain competitive. So, um, just to reiterate, the there's you know there's periodically the question arises as to the county's responsibility uh, to be involved in these programs. The county obviously is not mandated to fund programs. Sunflower, because it has agreed to contract with the state to provide for these services, we are mandated to provide every service that a child needs, which means then that we have to make sure that we're adequately staffed, that we hire the people that we need to if we're serving a child with a hearing, uh, a hearing need or um, whatever exceptionality, maybe needs services from a visually impaired certified person, we have to go out and find that person. So, um, so it, it requires then a, a, a combination of every source of revenue we can, we can get to, which gets me to um, why I'm here this morning. Our request from Stafford County is that we maintain the same level of funding for 2017 that we had in 2016. Um, Stafford County has reduced its funding uh, somewhat over the last few years. I, I presume just to make sure that uh, what you're providing is equitable with what the other counties are doing and the number of persons that are being served from each county. And with the exception of Barton County, I believe that's where you are. Pawnee County uh, funds us at about that same 20000 Rice County's funding is around 30 or maybe just slightly over 30,000 a year. Rush County uh, funding is only at about five, but then we only serve on, on average maybe one to two children a year because it's the population base there is so low. Uh, Barton County, it's no secret, has reduced its funding over, over the last few years and has reduced it pretty significantly. But um, the thing that I, uh, that I think I want to emphasize is that when Barton County made that, that reduction in mill levy funding, we, that's when we initiated uh, what's, what's referenced here as our Invest in Kids membership club uh, to make up that difference. And the uh, population, the, the supporters that we, that we primarily key on are Barton County residents. So even though the Barton County commissioners may not be carrying what appears to be or what seems to be their fair share of the load, Barton County taxpayers are. Um, our budget this year from that fund, and it has been for the last several years, is $60,000. And I think we came up just a few thousand dollars short of that last year, but the previous years we've been at or above that level. So Barton County, Barton County taxpayers are paying their share. What, what did the commissioners fund here? Uh, this year we're at we're at ten thousand, I think, and I'm requesting fifteen. Uh, at least one of the commissioners has raised the uh, serious question as to why why they fund programs like ours at such a low level. Um, the comment that she made last year at budget time was, and, and certainly not not. Not that she wasn't or isn't a, a fan of sort of humane society or things like that, but that they're providing more funding for the humane society than they are for kids. My <laughs> expectation, yeah. you know, it's like, and I, you know, all, all I could do was was quietly applaud because that that is true. Um, my expectation uh, with the change in in the structure of of the members of that commission this year at budget time, I, uh, I'm requesting a, a $5,000 increase even though they said please don't increase at all because of what they're facing with oil and gas uh, valuations. I'm not sure how that affects Stafford County. The Barton County is affected pretty, pretty substantially. Twice. Okay. So I heard on the radio the other day what Barton County's numbers are. I mean, it's hard just twice in the Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. <clears throat> so they should stop whining. Is that what you're saying? It was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was substantial last year. So it you know, I've, I've asked that question for three years now about the, you know, why Martin County is reluctant to fund mm -hmm. their fair share. It's, and and I think 
I don't necessarily think that it is uh, any adversity to our need. Right. They, they just maintain that we have access to other sources of revenue. And if those sources of revenue were where they should be, then that's, they probably make a good case, in which case we'd be asking for less from all of the counties. But um, with the way things have evolved over the last few years, that just simply is not the case anymore. Uh, part of it is personalities. There, are, there have been in the past a couple of commissioners who uh, just for whatever reason felt like we were a target worth taking a shot at. So, and I'm, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, that's just the reality of it. But I, I think that, or I want to believe at least, that there will be a, a kind of, over the next few years at least, that there will be a change in how that's perceived. So this invest in kids membership club, you say you raised almost sixty thousand in that. Uh huh. And that is just purely donations. Right. Right. And it's and, and quite frankly the, the approach that we took the very first year that we established that was that Barton County had made such a substantial reduction in funding of bill levy and so we we're going back to the Barton County residents who uh, who believe that that is a priority and they responded then with those kinds of donations. Uh, we, in this one, the last two years, of, this will be the third year that one of the major functions of that is a, is a phone campaign. And that's, you know, that just in a single day has raised a, a, a large percentage of what we were trying to raise. But it still requires an awful lot of individual donations, uh, a few large gifts, and an awful lot of small ones. But again, it's, it's focused on on Martin County taxpayers. And that's why we believe we can come in here and say, you know, they are they are carrying their share, they just just not in the way that maybe we would like for them. In the future, what do you see, I mean, with the t wonderful tax lead deal, what do you see your needs changing over the next several uh, in, years? In terms of our needs, you mean? Do you see this funding being stagnant from the county? And, um, probably, it, I, I don't know any way around that because if the tax lid really is imposed the way I understand it to be, you've got you've got virtually no wiggle room. And you know we understand as well as anybody that there are an awful lot of needs in the county beyond just uh, the needs of individual programs or outside agencies. And we're just hoping that we'll continue to be a priority, but, but our ability to come in and legitimately request increases is going to be pretty much non-existent because you've still got roads and bridges and you've got personnel and you've got all of those things that, that those costs are going to rise and you have no control over it. So um, my hope is that at some point in time the, the state will start to recognize a higher responsibility for this. But again, with some of the actions that have occurred this year, uh, the movement of funds out of the uh, Children's Initiative Fund and into the general fund, that didn't affect us yet, but at some point in time it will. Because we get some small amounts of money out of that. We get there is money out of that tobacco settlement fund that goes to infant toddler services. So if if they really do anything significant with that or if they take it and broker it away like they were trying to or at least discussing in this last session, that would eliminate an awful lot of long term funding. And those dollars have to be used for matched in federal funds. Uh, just the same as our primary responsibility back to the state to access federal dollars is a maintenance of effort of local dollars. And so, uh, again, when Barton County made their reduction, that could have had a pretty serious effect on our ability to draw down federal funds through the state's program because we weren't maintaining our local uh, match effort. That's why we established the Invest in Kids campaign to try to make up that difference. It's, it's a juggling act, just like it is for you guys. Uh, trying to look at all of the needs and uh, knowing that you can't meet them all. So we're just asking you to set our budget first and then set all the rest up. <laughs> so the investing kids is going to kind of have to maintain what they're doing 
from here on. So they're going to have to maintain it, and going forward, they're going to have to look at ways to, to increase that because those costs. I mean, those costs continue to rise. If we're going to be competitive with the schools in terms of costs of salaries and such, we have to raise that salary base every year. And even if it's only, um, I think on average, the special ed co-op over there and the school district there, unless they do some major adjustments, it's usually a, a you know, four to maybe $600 a year at the most. But once you make that, it's not going to go away. It just keeps going up. And if, this, if the categorical aid is flat and the uh, tax lid is flat, then we've got to figure out other ways to raise dollars. So you, you guys basically service the five counties, right? Right. Yeah. right. Did you just hire a Stafford County employee that's going to be in the work there? I don't know. You tell me. I think you did. Nick Smith's granddaughter. Oh. Yeah. We hire, we have a lot of people that live outside the Great Bend and Martin County yeah. area. So, um, we're kind of living halfway between where he teaches and she's been to work for a few years, I think. So, okay. living here at the same time. Oh, um, Kylie? Kylie, yeah. Okay, no, okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, I didn't even try to get used to learning her last name because I think she's going to have a new one before too long. I can't even tell you where her name is going to be. Uh, I should be able to. Yeah. I, I will eventually. Yeah. But yeah, she's already started. She started this year and she's working. With, uh, she's under contract for the summer session. And then, uh, you know, we, we just are lucky. She's we, good. We have uh, we found some really good folks that like what we do and want to, want to stay with us, but, but we are in competition. There's no question about that. Um, I'd stay here all day and try to talk to you about this, but you probably have a few other things to do. So uh, if you have questions, uh, by all means, feel free to, to contact me. I'll uh, make the same comment I made last year. If you have someone that you think would really be a good board member or a short board member from Stafford County. so. We'd love to have some additional representation here. If any one of you guys are showing up things to do, uh, be sure to let me know that. Excellent. <laughs> Shane says Kurt is. Uh -huh. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> not making eye contact. Yeah, yeah, right. I noticed that. Right. that. I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. I noticed their services. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, eye contact. Uh, that's, sometimes <laughs> that's just that. Yes, I'm making a note. Are you? Oh, okay. okay. All right. Make, make, yeah, making, yeah, making a note to, to nominate one of the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time. Do you have commissioners on that board or not? Or uh, we have people. had in the past. We don't most have them are just local people. Yeah. 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 Our, Our, job for Dave. Yeah. He would be really good. He would be good at it. Who's that? Nick Kylie's grandma. Oh, okay. He'd be really good at it. Or is Kylie's mom. Okay, we'll ask her. Okay. Yeah. Tell, tell her. her. Tell, tell her. You want to keep Grandpa's working on. here? Yeah. 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 Well, this is a very hard. It would be. It would be good to have an extra. Yeah. An extra yeah. It'd be a really good. It would be. Good. Okay. I'll. I'll tell her you said so, and then tell her to tell him that. That's that's that would be you. Be and then he'll story. come looking for you. Yeah. You continue to keep your head down. I didn't say anything. Okay, I appreciate it. Again, if you have questions, be sure and let me know. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Carl. Yes, sir. Right. You have some good news? No, sure. I like it. Looks good. Oh. That was something else. Is there something else? Um, let's see. The proposed 2017, do you want to go down? We can go down line, line item by line item if you want to. It's still not going to take that long. The total on the bottom went up about 2.2%. It was $55,850 to $159,280. On the second page, what I did now, 
Now, on my because my contract for the appraiser is every four years, and we typically keep being the same pretty much until the four years again. So, so that's why I have four year and the cost of living on there. And on the second page, it breaks down the hundred forty five thousand eight hundred thirty per employee on there. Um, in green is where this is where we are at, and then at the end in purple is where it would take it. And then kind of gives you a high and low range for those positions that, that I did. Actually, Coffee County, it's funny Coffee County did this, or they messed up other things, just did a survey on the appraiser just so I kind of, I didn't have to update who was right in the ballpark there. Um, it really, you know, it's starting to see on, on the appraisers, it's starting to find that the counties are starting to find out their location is making a big impact on who wants to be the appraiser there. Just like Osborne County, they just had to re-sign somebody this year because the other person left or they, they got rid of and Osborne County, which I don't know if you're, you're probably familiar with it, uh, they, they had to pay 63000 for part-time. Because nobody, yeah, nobody wanted you know, them to go there. So, so anyway, but then that was only, then they, that person has to re-sign though again a year from now. Everybody has to re-sign June 2017. So, anyway. And you know, one thing that we're starting to see with the appraisers also, and this is probably bad for the taxpayers, and maybe when you guys have your commissioners, you know, meetings, annual meetings and so forth, there's a lot of people that, and the reason I'm saying this is because it aggravates me, is that these, these appraisers are going out and right now they're trying to do district counties, but the only reason they're doing it is, is they're gonna do it a one-term thing and they're doing it for their keepers. So in my opinion, what that's doing is that's cutting out the professionalism and it's cutting the taxpayer short. And that's what I'm afraid of that we're starting to see where, you know, we've been a district for quite a while, but now it's, it's getting to the point of, it's, it, it's benefiting one person. So I think that's wrong, but there's nothing I can do about that. But anyway, that has nothing to do with us, but. That's what's actually starting to happen out there. Uh, anyway. So anyway, we go down. I think I tried to look at this a little pretty close again. Um, some of them went down. Some of them went up. Uh, the one that probably we should look at would be under the contractual services number 4315, the dues and subscriptions. Last year that was $2,500. This year it's $800. The 2500 was, was was with that contract with AOS. That was that company we paid to do the soil survey to help us get in per parcel. So of course we don't we're done with that. And so what that drop is so that dropped back to a little bit lower than where it was prior years. And what that's for is, is, is just for our normal uh, dues and subscriptions. The line that went up was two down below it, 4333, the Pro Services DLT. And Gail Ogle is how you say her name. And this year it's at $1,950. In the past for the GIS, uh, we had a three-year contract to save a lot of money. We, we did a three-year thing, and it, it actually expires in 2017. So DLC right now is not offering a three-year. They're offering a three-year contract with no discount. So we can do a one-year, 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 and we're not going to... The only way we would save anything if we did it three years in case, in case they, they went up to the next year, you know, four or five percent. But I just took, I, I'm, I'm going out on a limb because they didn't expect that to happen. So of the 1950, what that would be then is 1,050 would be for DLT because that subscription's out. If we need help with the GIS, instead of hiring a company, I'd like to go with Gail Local. I thought if we were with her services, she said she would drop to $60 an hour and she could web eggs in or she could come down either one. But, uh, Where's she on uh, Russell. Russell. And she actually used to work for AOS. 
and then before that she worked for the Russell County uh, GIS department. So she's very familiar with that, and uh, which is probably still why she actually has a decent charge price. And then I have 300 for other in case something that I haven't seen might fall in there. Uh, everything else is pretty well went down or stayed the same. If you go down to the capital outlay under Orion Expenditures, number 45514, we did not actually write a check this year. If you remember when, when the state updates Orion, uh, they charge us 10 cents per parcel. Uh, we did not use that this year because they did not have an updated. They did have some updates, but the larger counties wanted them and they paid for it. And the updates that they that they wanted, I still haven't used it at all. 2017, they're acting like there will not be anything, but there could be. They're not they're not I'm just sure yet. So I went ahead and put it in there. I guess if you go through this later and you cut, that would be something you could look at right there. If, if you needed to do something there, that's six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, 2018 down the bottom will be the last year for the Becometry. Um, at the director's update, they are going to have major changes with Orion, the system, and what that means is um, there in 2018 there probably will be a cost of that 10 cents per parcel. Um, what they're trying to do is they're actually going to make some different fields just have more options again. And of course, they say, you know, with more options, it's always better. But when you have more options, as far as uh, building materials and so forth like that, different breaking things down, is you actually have more data entry. It's not even, it, the system might be faster, but the data entry is slower. Because now you have to go find all the options that is given now. So, good, bad, but that's how it is. Um, um, so that's really, that's our budget, if there's anything, if you guys want to kind of savor that for a minute, see if you come up with a question for me on that. Um, I will get you caught up on our zoning. Um, if you guys remember, we had that meeting and that, and that lunch, we were, we're going to have Bickley uh, Foster Associates, they're working on our zoning still. The reason we haven't heard anything is because of their workload with the uh, wind farms in the counties they're working for. Now that some of those are done, now we're back. We wasn't really priority one uh, because we didn't have a hearing set up. And and so now that some of those zoning hearings are complete and they're moving on, uh, we're back on, you know, kind of back on board now, so to speak. So that's where we're at. In my mind, they're, we're about three months behind where they thought we would be. So, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, have just recently talked to some uh, a company about putting a tower just outside of Stafford, so that might be coming up on a conditional use um, to get some service over there. Uh, we did mention that Maxville has some more service, so up to maybe do a little study over around Maxville. It's not really rising. No, it's actually not. Okay. On there. Another thing, while you're thinking over the, the budget, we're going to start the 17% reinspection because we've already certified. Have you had a chance to look at that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've already switched over to 2017. The 17% that we'll be going out and retaking photos of and remeasuring uh, buildings and so forth is the uh, West Part of St. Uh, St. John area, this part of St. John we're going to renew, and then we have Clear Creek, Richland, South Seward, and West Cooper, those townships. So we'll be starting, that usually starts now until the end of August, middle of September. So we have areas pretty hot and heavy then. Um, got it, had, has a, we have a request uh, from a, a, a junior, which I guess he'd be a senior now, that he would like to, he's kind of interested in, in this profession or maybe want to see what, what we did and so forth, and wanted to do some data collection with us. We've never done that here. Uh, I was getting, I told him I'd ask you guys what you thought. Uh, I'm not saying they would 
graduate, they'd have to go to college, you know, and come back. And I'm not saying that would happen, but it might help that individual out maybe if, um, but I didn't know if we could pay them a little bit, you know, to come and help. I was thinking, you know, I would take them out with me from like, tell them from like nine to three, and then when we come back in, then they could go home, so to speak, something like that. It wouldn't be every day, they still have to have another job, and I did, I was thinking maybe we could use maybe some of that $650 that we're not spending on the Ryan and use it on the local. Just a thought. I might see what you guys think on that. Yay, nay. Um, it's, it, it's, you know, every time the students come in, we always mention, you know, it's, you know, the GIS field would be good for those kids to get into. And then the, um, you know, I, I didn't plan on being an appraiser, and I don't think nobody ever plans on it. It just happens. And but I just try to tell them, don't, don't, don't forget about it anymore. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you can take some architectural classes, and you can take business classes, and then you might fall into it somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, I was kind of want to see how you guys feel on that part, uh, as far as. Once yeah, your name. Once you got it. Old tape measure for you. Yeah, and, and kind of start learning the, the, the materials and so forth, and, and, and how the appraisal system and where it end up, you know. And hopefully, there he'll ask, you know, well, why is this here broke out compared to this part of the dwelling, uh, you know, and you know, and, and just kind of learn in general what's going on. And you know, it might not help him. It might not help him here right away. But say if you go because a lot of the larger cities. Um, I'm going to use Manhattan because they're looking for some kids right now is they hire part-time summer help that has turned in for them to be full-time. It just, they, they get to see what's going on and it kind of, it, it turns them into that like, like or not like kind of thing. Uh, they had one kid up there that, that I know that he, he came back and enjoyed that but he, then he turned around and went to auctioneer school. But, Understood some other things with the real estate part of it too, though. So, good options. Let me check with the insurance. Okay. Okay. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Do you think he'd do it for the six hundred and fifty dollars? Well, I think if we did it so much per hour, like I said, they, you know, and I don't know what that would, what would that be? Well, you're not talking every day. Either. No, but I think what they're looking and, and they already know they have to have another job. Yeah, I mean, you're talking. That I, they, they understand that. I think this is actually, and what's kind of nice about it is, I don't think it's so much for a full time job now, it's to see how they feel about it and do a learning curve. And I, so I don't think that's good. Summer health is the good part. It's $10 now. Just to give you a nice tip. So, okay. So, what about me? Of course, that's hard. Well, let me, let me check with the liability on the insurance first. Okay. Because okay. I know there were some kids that wanted to ride with the police, and they don't allow that. So, I, I, just let me check on it. Okay. Well, I know that one gal, you know, Dickinson County, that GIS coordinator or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, she was touting that at a meeting. You know, this is a field that there's an opportunity mm -hmm. there, and I think that on some of the community colleges now offering courses in GIS. They're trying, that's right. They're, so that's right. They're trying to, and perhaps one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Brad actually added, I think, the GIS when they, and they actually, Brad's actually going to add uh, for the wind farms, yeah. uh, maintenance, repairs, and so forth, to try to get some local people to help stay here and maintain them. Oh, that was good, too. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of gets you up on, on kind of where we're at. Do you have any thoughts on it? Uh, I'm going to ask a personal question. Um, just to make sure I'm okay here, is I do want to drop to two counties June in 2017. Are, are we good? <laughs> I mean, 
I was going to ask you. Well, I don't want to drop the other county. I don't want to drop the other county. And then I come here and you guys say, well, I think we're going to open this up for other people. I don't have a quarter in my pocket. I can't answer that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably about it. Yeah. 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 I'd say, yeah. Okay. That's what I was wanting to hear, too, what your plans were. So okay. That's my plan. Does that affect your plan? That's my plan. Yeah. It would be great. <laughs> All I have then. So, if you see anything later, you need to have a question on that. That sounded like what? Well, I, just, I think he's gathering his What would it cost to do the rest of the county and it's all that? Hmm. I can share. I would probably have to get Stan and go to Rita. And how long it would take, and if it would be on a waiting list for several years. Because, you know, the thing that still bothers me about this Cheney watershed, that was done 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it finally hit our county. Mm -hmm. Why did it take 10 years? Well, I mean, part of it's what the appraisers have time to do. Mm -hmm. And we actually, they gave us. They gave us an email probably two years ago saying that that map was prepared and, and it was out on that website and that we would need to, we needed to get that project done. So that was eight years. Mm -hmm. and but they didn't give anybody a deadline. Mm -hmm. We could still not have it done. There's not a deadline yet. Yeah. As of last week, they they're... They didn't. Wow. That's what I can't believe is who instigated. That's what nobody will say. Or who paid for it. instigated that survey. Or who paid for it. Well, that's my question. Yeah. Who paid, for, who paid yeah. for that to be done? I just can't and believe they why, made that. Why was it just the cheating watershed? I can't believe they made that big a mistake in classifying the same to begin with. They, 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 they paid for it. I don't think they paid for it. Just, that's, what, that's what I can't believe they, they were that far off when they first classified those soils. And, and, and because we knew they were, yeah. You know, just from working so here. I, I see both sides of the issue of, yeah, I wouldn't want to be a taxpayer faced with the bill right now, but you've been misclassified for, you know, who knows how long. So I don't. I know the people in the north part of the county don't want that done up there. No, no, no. Because there's a lot of that soil all over throughout the county. Mm -hmm. It's only fair to the taxpayers that are paying it for it, and you know, it probably gets done, but it's not going to be fair to the northern part of the county. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. At least four more. But I'll see if Dan, I'll see, to answer your question, I'll see, I'll see if Dan can get a. And, and you know, probably from what they said is probably besides standing or it might take all the way to go to that May meeting. Is, mm -hmm. is that in Salina or Manhattan where the NRCS has that May meeting and get that soil type and request that moved up? And also, can you tell us how, much, how many more uh, acres or parcels that would be of that soil type and that's not changed? Mm -hmm. And I actually, will, I actually have that. I would be curious to see yeah. how many acres. There's, or how there's many. still going to be, we would, if we did those two soil types, that the, the big soil types that, that are causing the problem, that are too low, yeah. the car wild, because the others wouldn't be a problem now. It's those two that, that would cause the big changes. Change. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's right at another 40,000 acres. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of soil. I mean, like you said, it, it'll go all the way up. Yeah. What it, what, what's on that soil part of the map? That's what it is, basically. And what part of it would do is as actually... Because right here's the main part. Yep. It got affected. And as you can see, it's it wouldn't affect thing. the north part of Stafford because yep. that is a different soil. But it right. would come through and it would go back up all the way up. You're right. I would be curious to see the soil type from this one to this. 
to see what the difference is in the, because I, I bet that's misclassified too over by Stafford. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty good ground, right? That's the best ground we can. Yeah, I just I just don't. stay away from section twenty-five. That's a that's a whole can of the one in red. You, you're pretty close to twenty-five. I have had people talk about no, no, not that's my no. Why we haven't and why and what it would take to get it done and okay. don't touch 13. it. I've tried them both. Yeah, it does. Okay. I will get that to you on the MRI stand. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Are you going to get him? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. you just I'll you find out. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. Why do we have finance charges on all the visa cards of the sheriff's department? Because that was in the transition with the individual that got fired, uh, okay. and we couldn't find receipts, and it, uh, it, it was just a mess up. Okay. That is in the current That's in the correct range. So. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But didn't we approve her up to? The annual rate on that is 43. Okay, yeah, they, yeah, that's so, the range. That's nice. yeah. That was kind of the top of the range, where we said. They, so it should be the bottom of the range. Yeah, but for what we thought the total was going to be. Range 12, step 1 is 2110 an hour. 43,887, 12 a year. How much per year? 43,88,7. For 20 minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. So um, here is um, 
impairments evaluation if you want to look at that. And I would like to, uh, I recommend the step range for her going from uh, range four, step one, to range four, step two. Effective. Effective June one. I would move that we give Karen Petty her step increase from range four step one to range four step two. I'll second that. And then say we uh, increase Karen Petty's step range on the favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. our intern for the summer. This is Brianne Anschutz. Hi. Hi. And uh, she's from the Radium area and working for us um, summer before she goes to K-State. Uh, she has a background that stood out to us in 4-H photography, which is going to help us put together some promotional videos for the county and uh, kind of enhance our ability to kind of market through the more visual way. That's kind of what we've asked her to work on this summer. And um, so... Very good. Um, the other thing I thought I'd bring up is that they have announced uh, a new request for proposals for the moderate income housing program. So this is the grant program that was used in part to construct the duplex in Maxville. And only municipalities and counties are eligible to be the direct applicants to that. There might be an opportunity to pursue something with that again, but you know, kind of wanted to explore whether you're open to that. Uh, as, you know, the um, thought, thought I had on what might be, I don't know, competitive and advantageous to try for this time. A couple of towns in the, the state have done something where they provide a down payment assistance program. So Lions and Great Bend are the ones that I'm most familiar with. And the general system is that the moderate income housing program provides a $25,000 subsidy. Um, the home buyer is the one that finances the construction of the property. Um, you know, they have to be pre-qualified and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the 25000 is used for down payment assistance. It helps make sure that the house is, you know, qualifying for financing because we always deal with that idea if you have comps and can you get it to can you get financing. So anyway, um, you get a 25000 down payment um, subsidy and there's a requirement if we follow kind of the way that Lions and Lions in particular design their program. A requirement that the person lives there for a certain period of time, otherwise they pay it back um, in five years. I mean, there isn't any strictly way that we can design the program the way we want to here, but that, generally speaking, is one way that has um, competed well for funding. And I'm thinking if we went in with a more modest amount than what I think some other counties are going in with, you know, so like you can. Um, apply for up to 350000 I think it is. Nobody gets the full amount. <laughs> if you went in and asked for 75000 and got three houses built in a year, that might be a, a win, and because it's a more modest application, be more likely to fund my thinking strategically. So I, applications aren't due until well into August, um, and then announcements are made from coming around October. But I thought I'd just kind of um, introduce the idea. Like to see. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Well, we didn't have any problems with the Maxville project, did we? Not from my perspective. Uh, uh, I'm fine with the grants. That stimulates some yeah. new construction and so forth. If, if that's useful. That's our goal, man. Yeah. Worth a try. Is it anywhere in Stafford County then? Or? Well, it, again, it'd probably be how we want to stipulate it. Um, I I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I don't care, but we probably have the, uh, the ability to do some, you know, well, there's one lot in Stafford right now that we still have economic development owns and has not yet constructed. 
working on. Um, there's tax sale coming up, right? I, I don't know a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> I would. Yeah. When is available? That's that strike right. it is a kind of a good way to get some property without a lot of expense. That's you know already got the infrastructure. I a lot of how we competed well for the in the first round is that we made the case that. Um, Essentially, the, the municipalities were providing a match besides the fact that all the infrastructure is already there. We didn't have to go build the sewer, water, streets. Streets the big one because we were using infill lots. And so they looked at the value of the lots that we used as $60,000 per lot, even though we all know that's not that's what not the cost of a lot is here. Wish there was. But that's that what was. they budget for what one would spend if you started from scratch. So um, we could try that kind of strategy again. Um, I know here I'm talking to the county and there are people that are interested in building outside the county or outside of city limits rather. I don't know how you feel about the idea of incentivizing housing construction outside well, usually the focus is there's within definitely the some towns. properties that need cleaned up outside that are vacant. I mean, I would be not be opposed to setting something up like that. That it would that have would to be on... <clears throat> that would encourage cleanup of some of the old sites and new construction as well. I'll have to feel around on that. I don't know. I've never yeah, heard of them incentivizing housing right, outside, outside of, of, yeah, of the city. town. But we can explore it. Okay. Sounds good. That's all I have for today. All right. Good luck. We'll have just, a, <laughs> uh, just, I guess, kind of um, relating just generally kind of some activities that I've kind of developed. We're going to have um, a day next Tuesday where it's the bike and build group. I don't know if you remember last year, they think yeah. they're, they're coming again. And um, when we focus in St. John, we're going to be doing plaster removal at Gray's studio. We're going to be assembling cabinets that will go into the future business incubator here on 2nd and Main. We need to put everyone in hard hats and do that ceremonial groundbreaking when we've got a lot of people. <laughs> um, and then depending on some, uh, well, I, the third project, if we can get into help with the grocery store, we will. Um, and um, so we'll have Touch News, Great Bend Tribune, possibly KWCH here, and so it'll be kind of an active day. And, and KWCH has kind of um, shown some interest in showing it as a um, kind of small town resilience article. How we're, yeah, all those three things, showing some resilience in keeping our place going. So. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Dylan's been kind of cleaning out some a lot, of, a lot more stuff. Is that all right? I mean, they had a crew in there for a while. If they can um, come to agreement on the lease termination, there may be some ability to help with that. And that was hopefully going to be. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we pretty well covered things today. Anything else, Shane? I don't have anything covered. No. Nope. All right, we're adjourned.